Guest of the Nation is a poignant short story written by Frank O'Connor in 1931, which later received an Opie Award-winning adaptation as a play. Set during the War for Irish Independence, it explores the ironic camaraderie that develops between two English hostages and their Irish captors amidst the backdrop of a forceful and brutal conflict. The narrative revolves around Hawkins and Belcher, the English hostages who have been held captive on a rural farm for a significant period of time. Surprisingly, despite their captive status, they establish a rapport with their Irish captors. They engage in friendly card games together. Bonaparte, the narrator, and Noble serve as the Irish soldiers responsible for guarding them, while Jeremiah, the officer in charge, participates occasionally, albeit with less friendliness, towards the Englishmen. The four men engage in light-hearted banter and jokes. During their interactions, Hawkins playfully teases Bonaparte, as he possesses a better understanding of the Irish countryside. Both Hawkins and Belcher have spent time in Ireland, attending dances, and even learning Irish songs. Due to the Englishman's previous well-behaved behavior, Bonaparte and Noble grant them considerable freedom, confident that they won't attempt to escape, despite their distinguishable accents and different attire. Belcher develops a friendship with an older woman whose house serves as the soldier's residence. Although they are technically prisoners, Belcher assists her in cutting wood, creating an affectionate bond between them. Bonaparte observes that despite Belcher's stature, he speaks sparingly, yet exhibits exceptional skill in card games. Bonaparte speculates that Belcher's proficiency in cards stems from his reserved nature, while Hawkins and Noble often engage in arguments and distractions. Hawkins, in particular, is quick to engage in debates about religion and capitalism, arguing against them with Noble and the older woman. One fateful night, Hawkins and Noble engage in a heated argument about capitalism and religion, with Hawkins opposing them and Noble supporting these concepts. Growing bored with the conversation, Bonaparte notices Jeremiah leaving and decides to follow suit. During their walk, Jeremiah abruptly stops and reminds Bonaparte of his duty to watch over the prisoners. Bonaparte dismisses his concerns, questioning why Hawkins and Belcher are even considered prisoners. Jeremiah then reveals a distressing truth, Irish prisoners are being held captive by the enemy, and the English threaten to execute them. In retaliation, the Irish plan to execute Hawkins and Belcher. Bonaparte is stunned by this revelation, expressing his discomfort with the idea of taking their lives. Jeremiah, however, assures him that their fate is sealed and their execution will take place within the next few days. Depressed by this knowledge, Bonaparte returns to the cottage. Inside, Hawkins and Noble continue their good-natured debate about religion. As Bonaparte locks up Hawkins and Belcher for the night, he shares the grave news with Noble. Both soldiers feel uneasy but ultimately decide not to disclose the impending execution to the Englishman, considering the possibility that it may not occur after all. Bonaparte wonders about the consequences he might face if he attempts to prevent the execution. The following day, a somber atmosphere permeates the cottage. Belcher remains oblivious, while Hawkins futilely attempts to engage Noble in conversation. In the evening, after tea, the men gather to play cards, and Bonaparte, slightly relieved, entertains the thought that the execution might be avoided. However, Jeremiah arrives and informs Bonaparte and Noble that the time has come. For Irish soldiers, including a 16-year-old, have been killed. Bonaparte reluctantly understands the necessity, but Noble's discomfort is evident. Consequently, Jeremiah sends Noble to discreetly dig graves. Jeremiah instructs Bonaparte to inform the Englishmen that they are being transferred once again. They do as instructed, unsettling Belcher. While Hawkins expresses his annoyance at the situation, disbelief etches his face when Jeremiah reveals their imminent execution. Jeremiah singles out Bonaparte, assigning him the responsibility of confirming the prisoner's fate. With a heavy heart, Bonaparte reveals that they have received orders to execute the men. Hawkins remains incredulous, unable to accept the reality of the situation. Jeremiah taunts him, asserting that they must pay the price for the executed Irishman. Hawkins questions whether Noble is part of this plan, to which Jeremiah confirms his involvement. Dismissing the notion, Hawkins insists that he and Noble are friends and that Noble would never shoot him. 
Just then, Noble arrives, and Hawkins turns to him, emphasizing their friendship and proclaiming that he would never harm Noble. Speaking on Noble's behalf, Jeremiah declares that Noble would indeed carry out the execution. Jeremiah grows impatient and asks the men if they have any last words. Hawkins defiantly declares his intention to desert and switch sides in the war, citing his friendship with Noble as a reason to believe they would never allow the men to be killed. Refusing to back down, Hawkins believes that Noble and Bonaparte will intervene. Observing Jeremiah raise his gun toward the back of Hawkins's head, Bonaparte shuts his eyes in anticipation. A gunshot rings out, and Hawkins collapses at Noble's feet. Belcher attempts to fashion a makeshift blindfold but finds it too small. He requests Bonaparte's, which Bonaparte reluctantly provides. Noticing that Hawkins is not yet dead, Bonaparte fires another shot to end his suffering. Belcher, without any last words of his own, informs the men that Hawkins has a letter to his family in his pocket. The soldiers, burdened by their duty, express apologies as they reference duty once again. Belcher comments on his lifelong struggle to comprehend the concept of duty, yet harbors no ill feelings toward the men. Jeremiah swiftly dispatches Belcher with a single shot, eliminating the need for a second. Following the executions, the soldiers bury the deceased, and Noble discovers Hawkins's letter. As they return to the house, weighed down by despondency, the old lady expresses her dismay at the men for killing the prisoners. She seeks solace in her prayers, clutching her rosary beads. Overwhelmed with emotion, Noble falls to his knees before the fire. Bonaparte reflects on the profound sense of insignificance he now feels and realizes that nothing will ever evoke the same response from him, again. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.